and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked, and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. May the Lord have his blessings to our reading, or portion of his words. Amen. Eternal Father and our God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Into your hands we submit our lives afresh this morning, thanking you for your divine watch care throughout the night and the privilege to witness another sunrise. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us even this morning. We thank you for your word on the first segment. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. As we continue to petition your throne on behalf of the sick and the shuttings, those who would have grown cold, I pray, dear Lord, that you will rekindle the fire within us Renew a right spirit within us. Grant us the desire both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Into your hands I submit and present the presenter for this morning. I pray, dear Lord, that you will use your servant as never before. May you humble your servant that you in turn may be exalted. I present everyone on the platform this morning, every home represented. I pray the Lord for the administration of this program and for every one that are actively involved in ministry in one way or another. I pray your blessing upon your people. Beat back the forces of darkness. And let your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Now, brothers and sisters, the moment we are all waiting for is this moment when we present to you the main facilitator for today. He is no other than the Principal, retired teacher, Brother Lambert. Now, Brother Lambert, it is your time to lead out in this part of this, this segment. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, Brother Tesman, I'll give away to, to Brother Tesman to be the presenter this morning. Sister Stuart and myself had made that arrangement so that when, he, when his holidays up, I would function. I don't know if that was not conveyed to you, but that is the understanding that I have. Brother, Brother uh, Lambert. Yes. You'd have to readjust now and go ahead for this day, okay? No, um, not a problem. Not a problem, yes. my brother. All right. So, let us go.
first of all, I would like to have an appreciation of the all those with a copy of the Ministry of Healing, because we are in this together this morning. Yes, um, Helping the Tempted, page 161. Can I have a show of those with a copy of the book, please? Two, beautiful. Three, four. Lovely. Okay. This five, six. All right. And when I say I have a copy of the book, you know, I don't mean, I mean, available to use because we are in it together this morning. I would have gone through the chapter and there are some precious gems there for us to take out. And uh, <laughs> I am principal this morning. We are, it's a learning experience. It's not a lecture. Helping the tempted. Not because we first loved him did Christ love us. But while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He does not treat us according to our desert. Although our sins have merited condemnation, he does not condemn us. Condemn us. Year after year, he has borne with our weakness and ignorance, with our ingratitude and our waywardness. Notwithstanding our wanderings, our hardness of heart, our neglect of his holy word, his hand is stretched out still. I need I need a comment. I need a comment to show that we understand what it is saying to us. The depth of God's love to us. Wretched, miserable, poor, and blind. But God still loves us. Can I have a testimony? Can I have a comment? Can I have an input as to this paragraph? I could give you many. Notwithstanding not because we first love him. I would have looked at my life and I would have seen many times where I stepped away from him. And some of us would want to believe that when we sin, God leaves us up to ourselves. One of the biggest lie that the devil can ever tell. And we see it, for when Adam sinned, what did the Lord do? Did the Lord left him or leave him? No, what did the Lord do? Put back up those hands, please. You are with me this morning. The Lord said, Adam, where are you? In other words, you think the Lord did not know where he was? No, the Lord knew where he was. The Lord says, give an account. What has happened? What happened to our relationship? What befall you? Talk to me. Sister Catherine, Sister Sonia, Sister Bernice, talk to me. Yes, good morning, everyone. The Lord has promised that he will never leave us or forsake us. It means that in whatever situation we find ourselves, the Lord is still there with us. His e hope and his uh, arms uh, to receive us. He calls Amen. us to repentance. Amen. And um, he is a God of love, a love that 
man can never put a measurement to. That's the type of you do, you do have to go no further. You do well. You have done well. Okay. You have done well. Sister Sonia, then Sister Rosemary, and then Sister Hutchinson. Make it short. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone. Um, I just before I give my comment, I just would like to mention that uh, you you give remember that every book is not the same. So when you give the page, because I went to the page that you gave and it was not there, so I had to look it up. So please remember that all the books are not the same. But yes. my comment is that um, the biggest thing is God covered him. What clothing that Adam and Eve put on themselves, God removed that clothing for them himself. He made that clothing to put on them. And that clothing is Christ's righteousness because we can dwell on our righteousness, but it's their righteousness. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Sister Rose and then Sister Hutchinson. Despite everything, despite the situation with this young girl, one thing that stayed in my mind that this child said to me, I contemplated suicide, but when I think of that, I want to see the face of Jesus someday, I decided not to do it. That child Thank still you. has the mind that Jesus, she wants to see Jesus' face, so she's keeping the faith. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. That's the God we serve. Sister Hutchinson, go ahead then, Sister Jasmine. And my fellow priest, I need to see your hands again. Don't leave me. This well, is practical. Babe. Based on the, the, the passage that was read, it is interesting and heartwarming to know that being such a sinner, God still loves me. He's still there with me. His hand is still stretched out. I can always go to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. God loves this sinner, not the sin. And he has the power to do a surgery through the efficacy of Christ's blood to remove sin from the sinner. So as long as as long as we are desirous of going through having that operation being done. Sister Jasmine and then Brother Alexander. God said, um, be not dismayed, what here betide. God will take care of me. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of me. And first Peter um, one, first Peter five, verse seven says, casting all or cares upon him, for he cared for us. And that's okay. for me. Casting all my care upon him, for he cared for me. Exactly. That's my piece on this. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Alexander, before you come in, I'm going to ask Brother up here. There's a, this, the following paragraph, a very short one, very potent. Brother Abir, I would like you to read it and to take out those nuggets and give it to us, please. Brother uh, Alexander, then Brother Abir, and then Sister Maggie. Yes, thank you, my brother. Um, I just want to say to everyone, it's a blessing to be here. Um, my battery is about to run out, so if you don't hear me, I am, I'll be out. Um, also, I am back at work after four months away from work. I am now back at work as, so that the evening program sometimes I'm affected by it. So if you don't see me in an evening, sometimes I am on the road. Um, nevertheless, I am very thankful and grateful to God for what he has done, what he continues to do for me and my family, and it's a blessing to be on the platform. Um, the, the sister who 
first spoke on the, you know, God's relation to us. God does not leave us when we sin. And he demonstrated that in Adam. Oh, she said it so um, well, like you said, and I concur. And thank God that he came looking for Adam and he's looking out for us. God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. What up here? Yes, you had said you wanted me to do what, my brother? <laughs> brother Bear Martin, you're pleased to stay with us. <laughs> Keep focused. <laughs> I would like you to read the second paragraph and to expound on it briefly for us. Something's in it jump out at me, and I would like you to take them out. I'll them with us. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, I'm reading from the screen. Says grace is an attribute of God exercised toward undeserving human beings. We did not seek for it, but it was sent in search of us. God rejoices to bestow his grace upon us, not because we are worthy, but because we are so utterly unworthy. Our only claim to his mercy is our great need. Amen. Uh, a very good not hearing you uh, you're breaking up we're not hearing you start again did you hear the reading no, the reading was quite good, but the comments weren't here in the comments. I'm just, I'm just exploring to hear what you heard. Uh, grace is the most mysterious thing for the universe. That they, looking on before God's uh, intervention in the human race, it was thought that sin would result in penalty, in punishment. And as... This happened with the angels because they were fully aware of the standards of God and they, they presumptuously disobeyed. So there was no means of forgiveness for them. But because the human race was deceived, was tricked, God was misrepresented, he was able to intervene, to take on the guilt, to take on what we had done and take the penalty on himself and now make it possible for us to continue alive. And it is a wonderful thing. He's longing to give us that grace, that mercy that we desperately need, not because we deserve it in the least, but because it is his nature to be forgiving, to be uh, accepting, and to be reconciling whenever we fail of reaching the standards that he has set for us. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. You know, God has emotions. He says, God rejoices to bestow his grace upon us, not because we are worthy. Thank you again, my friend. Sister Maggie, go ahead. Pleasant morning to all. Um, this passage, well, I just want to say a little nugget from the first passage. Just letting us know that, you know, Christ loves us while we are yet sinners. What a great love. Grace. God's grace is attributed to us. God exercise, <laughs> you know, to undeserving human being. We don't have to seek for it. He is looking. He's in search of us to give us that grace and rejoices even though <laughs> sometimes we are so unworthy of it. It's just amazing of God's love. And in Ephesians chapter 2, and verse 4 and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were Amen. dead in sins, had quickened yes. us together with Christ. By grace he has saved. And I say amen and amen to this. What a wonderful isn't, God we serve. Isn't that beautiful, Sister Maggie? Yes, it is. It's beyond human concept. I can't. I can't comprehend <laughs> I cannot fathom it or comprehend it I cannot even understand it all I need to do is just to appreciate it 
God commend this love towards Amen. me. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, as we go through the day, let's contemplate such love, such love, that wretched, miserable, and done sinner like me, God loves me still. Uh, before you come, Sister Hutchinson, uh, I, I, I want to put, I want to get duck right here. The Lord God through Jesus Christ holds out, hold out his hand all the day long in invitation to the sinful and fallen. He will receive all. All. He will receive all. He welcomes all. It is his glory to pardon the chief of sinners. It is his glory to pardon the chief of sinners. He will take the prey from the mighty. He will deliver the captive. He will pluck the brand from the burning. He will lower the golden chain of his mercy to the lowest depth of human wretchedness and lift up the debased soul contaminated with sin. Doc. Good morning. I'm right here. Yes, Doc. You, you know, heard what was wrong with? You know, yes, I heard you. I, I, and you know right. something, Elder? Um, I think that is one of the things that we have to explain or, or try to, to put to the fore when we are doing consultation. Because sometimes persons come to you, they are so burdened on, they are guilty. The sense of guilt of how they have lived their lives is very pronounced and therefore they believe they deserve what was now happening to them. And that in, in itself will prevent healing. So we have to show that we serve a, a sin-bearing God, a loving Savior, right? One who, who told us that we should come and reason with him that though our sins are like scarlet, he can make us clean. Because it is the enemy's plan to, to show us that we serve a very uh, punitive God, the one who wants to take drastic action against us. But from creation, the original, you saw that when man sin and man, man run away from God, he went searching for them. The story of the prodigal son, even though he had gone and, and, and lived the life that he wanted, the father was still looking out for him. You know, the sheep that were, that went astray, the, the, the shepherd went looking after him. And I'm so very grateful to God that while I was yet sinner, a sinner, he came looking after me, looking for me, finding me where I was. And this is the assurance that we have. And it, it is, the, it is the, the, the consolation that we need to pass on to others. Don't let them feel this sense of guilt because already we are guilt-ridden. We, we know we, we have done wrong. We know the, the, the prodigal son made up his mind that he was going to confess and, and he knew what he had done wrong. You don't need someone else to push that sin down on you. What we need is the uplifting. And this is something that we bring to the fore when we are in consultation, when we are meeting, not even, but if you go to a health fair, if you see persons, and sometimes they say, no, my foot is hurting. I know it's me. Dude. I used to smoke. I used to do this. And But you have to show them the love and kindness of our mighty God. Thank you. Beautiful, Doc. Beautiful. That is our mission. When we talk about mission, that is our mission. That's our purpose. Not to pile the guilt on but to help them to relieve the guilt by pointing them to Christ Jesus, the sin bearer. Sister Hutchinson, before you speak, truth. I invite you to look at the next paragraph. A very short one, every human being. Sister Hutchinson, go ahead. Yes, on the second paragraph about grace, you know, like love, grace, grace is, is also God's character. Uh, as the saying, as the saying, um, we are seen abounds, grace much more is found. And on the, the paragraph that Dr. Lamy just talked about, the image of God, our loving Heavenly Father, stands with his hands. We can just look at God with his hands outstretched and a pitying face sometimes bidding us to come to him. And we are there lagging in sin and, and wallowing in it. So uh, we do not have to 
to go through the, the agony of the sin that we have committed and when it beating upon us to go through go through it alone. But uh, And as the song says, we, we carry all of these things, we bear all our sins because we do not take them to God and unload them off to him in through prayer. Thank you, my dear. You know, uh, God would have forgiven us, but the devil wants us to believe that we are not forgiven, and so we cannot forgive ourselves. We must accept salvation, saving grace. God gives it to us freely, and, we, and he rejoices when we accept it. Yes, it gives God pleasure when, it, when we accept what he gives us. He, he doesn't ask of us anything you know, more than just to accept salvation, accept his grace, his gift of mercy towards us. Brother Truth? Remind me again, tell us the paragraph. Make a flag, you know. You wanted to keep focus. I, I will take it. Every, every, no, it. every human being is the object of a loving interest to him who gave his life. Yes, read that one and give us the nugget from it. Okay, so it, 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 it reads thus. Every human being is the object of loving interest to him who gave his life that he might bring men back to God. So is guilty and helpless, liable to be destroyed by the heart and sneers of Satan, and care for as a shepherd cares for the sheep of his flock. And here we are seeing that every human being, every single one of us here represented online and worldwide, Christ died in our stead. What Christ had have done for us? He took our place. He took our sins. He took our very nature. And he take that with him to the tomb. And when he resurrected, we become the righteousness of God. Because his righteous life is now what? Imputed unto us. So as guilty and helpless as we may think we are today. It is not so, because we now have the righteousness of Christ. We have the strength. We have a character that is uh, that has already proven, tested, and tried. It bruised Satan. It, it defeated him. It put him to open shame that he has no, no longer any control over us. And as we give ourselves to Christ, we become his sheep, he becomes our shepherd, and we are led of him in pastor's dream. He gave us his spirit, he gave us his law, and now the spirit work in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. So we Thank can you, go about and do good as Christ did. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. This little part which says, liable to be destroyed. The law says, look here. You're guilty. You must be destroyed. But what do we find here? The art liable to be destroyed by the arts and sneer of Satan are cared for as a shepherd, care for the sheep. The law says, I am guilty. And many times in our disposition, we, that's what we do. We see it in church so often. Where is the love that we are to reflect? When I say we are to be the face of Christ, we are to reflect his character. Yes, justice is demanded, but where is the mercy? Thank you, my friend. The savior Hello? example. Yes, go ahead, my friend. Go ahead. Um, that statement, sir, liable to be destroyed by the arts and snares of Satan is um, from my perspective understanding this is uh, that souls persons are there that um, we can't help ourselves but Satan put things in our pathway to cause us to be destroyed yes so absolutely. but 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 um, the savior the shepherd of the flock is who cares for us, is able to deliver us. So Satan will put all manner of things, even though 
um, God cares for us. Sometimes he will put blockages in our pathway to cause us not to trust in God. But thank but God he cares for us so much that we can be delivered. Well and said, as you Pastor. rightly says, and as you rightly said, as children of God, and the next paragraph is going to bear on that, we ought to be there to help these, or else they're going to be destroyed. We ought to help one another, not yes. to succumb to the um to the snares of Satan. Yes. Uh, uh, Pastor, just deal with that second paragraph. I was going to ask Sister Diana, but I'll ask Sister Diana to do the next one. So you just do that one for us. All right. Could the person roll it up for me? Yes. Can you put it on screen, please, sister? The Savior's example is to be standard. The standard right. of this for Savior's... the tempted. Go ahead. The Savior's example is to be the standard of our service for the tempted and the erring. The same interest and tenderness and long suffering that he has manifested towards us, we are to manifest toward others. As I have loved you, he says, that he also loved one another. If Christ dwells in us, we shall reveal his unselfish love toward all with whom we have to do. As we see men and women in need of sympathy and help, we shall not ask, are they worthy? But how can I benefit them? This is how we really ought to be. We must be like Jesus. Amen. And because we are going to find people at different levels uh, in their walk with God. And sometimes some of us are so righteous that we condemn them and belittle them. But this is not so. We ought to be like Jesus. Jesus never condemned anybody. He loved them back to himself. And so the next question is, if Christ dwells in us, if Christ is in me, then I am going to treat my fellow, just like Jesus did. Amen. That is what I'm Beautiful. getting from. Beautiful, my 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 pastor. Good, very good. And I, I hope that we don't we, we're not just listening. You know, I pray that it will find lodgment in our hearts, so that our Christianity become practical. Amen. That we become the face of Christ when people see us in our dealings, whether it's business dealings. With a, whether it's our relationship in our homes, we, 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 you know, these things should drive hypocrisy from us. It should drive envy from us. It should drive bad mind from us. It, would, it should cause us to love unconditionally. It should modify our behavior, our decorum, our speech. It, you know, it shouldn't be covered love. It, it should not be uh, at the workplace, oh, Brother Lambert is a fantastic guy. He's loved by everybody. But when I'm at home, everybody is afraid of him. Or vice versa. Or at church, I'm the perfect person. But at home, oh, I'm resented by everybody. No, we are to be the face of Christ to every single person. You know, I'll give you a quick experience. I was told by one of our conference officials that... Um, somebody but drive another person and a bad word came out of the mouth when the person got close they realized that it was the pastor the elder told the bad word no it should never be like that no god help us sister diane i want you to look at the other chapter for us rich and poor high and low because it has something to do with mine right there Rich and poor, high and low, free and bond are God's heritage. Mm -hmm. He gave who he who gave his life to redeem man sees in every human being a value that exceeds finite computation. By the mystery and glory of the cross, we are to discern his estimate of the value of the soul. When we do this, we shall 
feel that human beings, however degraded, have caused too much to be treated with coldness or contempt. We shall realize the importance of working for our fellow men that they may be exalted to the throne of God. Now, this is saying that there no person should be exempted or should be cut off or deemed unfit or unsuitable for salvation. Every human being that, that come into this world has a right to salvation and none of us are so entitled to determine that this person is not deserving. It is said that a soul is, is worth a thousand world. And as when we see those persons as deserving of salvation, then we should run with haste to bring to them the good news of salvation. It is said that when we can see how valuable they are, we will not treat them with coldness or contempt, but realizing how important they are. You know, the worst of a person is that they value the sin of the rich of the blood. It is when you can look at somebody in their de um, degraded state of sin and see how they can be restored as the image of God, be re restored in such a person. We can see the power of salvation and the power that is in redeeming us unto himself. God didn't come for the righteous. He came to seek and save that which is lost and cut off in sin. And so if we have that passion that Christ has, then we will see everybody as a soul to be saved and not to be cut off as undeserving. Beautiful. Beautiful. Brother Linford, I call upon you. The, the lost coin in the Savior's parable Though lying in the dirt and rubbish was a piece of silver still. Finish it for us, Brother Linford, and give us your take on it. The last point in the Savior's parable, though lying in the dirt and rubbish, was a piece of silver still. Its owner sought it because it was of value. So every soul however degraded by sin, is in God's sight accounted precious. The coin bore the image and superscription of the reigning power. So man at his creation bore the image and superscription of God. Though now marred and dim through the influence of sin, the traces of this inscription remain upon every soul. God desires to recover that soul and to retrace upon it his own image in righteousness and, holy, and holiness. And so this is saying to us that each one of us is very important to the Savior. He has died for every one of us. And if it was only one person for whom Christ came or uh, for whom was was sin was in sin Christ would have come and died for that one and so like the lost coin which was important to the owner he sought and did everything to find that, that lost coin so we who are lost in sin, Christ has and is doing everything to redeem us from sin. We are in the miry clay. We are unable to help ourselves out of that miry clay, out of sin. But by God's grace and what he has done, we are able to be redeemed. It is for us to do our part, which is to accept his provision, to accept that which he has done. And this morning, we all have that opportunity of accepting the provision that God has done for us. He has died. He has paid the price. We don't need to die that eternal death because Amen. he has already died that death for us. Amen. May God help each one of us to accept that provision so that we can be with him eternally when he returns a second time. God bless you all. Beautiful, my brother. You know, in our evangelistic uh, work, 
there are times when we pass by some persons. And then there are some who we consider unreachable. But we are told right here that we shouldn't pass by anybody. The junkard, the homeless, those which society would have put on the, the edge, so they soon fall off. We should never pass anybody. And those who seem unreachable because they are so far up in society, the Lord would have made us able to reach them one way or the other. I see two hands, but time is against us this morning. And we continue tomorrow morning. Uh, I see Sister Jasmine, and I also see Sister Clara. I give you a minute each. <laughs> Uh, my minute is just to remind me of um, there were 90 and 9 that were safely laid, but the one that was lost, Jesus went and leave the 99 nine and went and get him. So that's what I take my take on that. Yes, well, that you are concurring with Brother, um, with brother Mark, if it was yes. only one. If you stand up. <laughs> Sister Lashley, give us your one minute. Yes, I just want to say I am so proud and so glad that I'm a child of God. The scripture says we are the apples of his eyes and I'm so grateful for what he has done for me. And in the beginning of the passage, you talk about the lost coin, though it was thrown in the dirt, it still remained a coin. And um, right. yes, we want to give God thanks for all that he has done. And I am so blessed to be a child of the King. That's my take. Amen, amen. This is prayer mountain. This is prayer mountain. Not just a mountain, prayer mountain. A place where we go, pray to our God, who is our Father, not wood and stone, not some animal, not object of his creation, but to the Creator himself, who knows me and loves me and cares for me. I don't have to take up my, my, my God and carry it with me. My God is not deaf, dumb, and blind. My God is God of the universe. This is prayer mountain. Let us pray. Mighty God, this morning we are thankful that you have revealed yourself to us through your son, Jesus Christ. As you would have seen, said to Philip, his disciples, when you see me, you see the Father. The character is so lovely, so admirable. Some a character that we should desire more than anything else. For Lord, you love us with an everlasting love. And your desire for ourselves, for us, is more than our desire for ourselves. For you are anxious, you rejoice when one renounces sin, come to you in penitence, asking to be redeemed, asking you, Lord, to take the burden of sin away and to reunite us with the family of heaven. Thank you, loving God. Thank you that you would have penned these instructions, these words, precious are they for us. May they not just be read. May they not be treated casually. May it not just highlight, Lord, our ability to, to expound. But may the transforming effect be effected in our lives so that we can reflect you. Bless us to this end as we go today. May the beauty of Jesus be seen in us, in all that we do or say, in all circumstances. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, amen. We continue tomorrow morning in the same light. Bring your books so that we can continue to glean precious treasure that has been locked up away from us. God bless us. Amen and amen. Now, as we make way for our brother here, we ask that you now make haste to put your, your request in the chat. And so at the singing, at the end of this chorus, um, brother Obir will intercede on your behalf. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant and free.
turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. I invite all to join me in prayer. As the word of God tells us, if two of us agree as touching anything, Jesus said in Matthew 18, it will be done for us of our Father who is in heaven. So we, we all to be praying along as we look at these requests. And we are grateful for your love. We are grateful for the manifestation of mercy. The universe had never known this. Kindness and forgiveness and grace to those who deserve punishment and destruction. And it is a wonderful new revelation of your eternal character. You've always been that way, but there never was an opportunity to see that aspect of your character until man had sinned. And we ask that through the ministration of Holy Spirit, applying the merits of Jesus, you will help us fully grasp to the extent that we might the significance of this most beautiful quality of your character that has been revealed since man fell. And in view of this, we receive your power to surround us, to insulate us from the distracting efforts of the enemy, to stabilize the, our internet connections so that we will be able to focus and unite together and receive the blessings needed in those cases that have been presented here this morning. Our uttering these prayers, don't make them have merit before you at all. You showed in Romans 8 that we don't know how to pray as we should, but uh, your divine companion whom you sent to earth to be with us, Holy Spirit, he makes intercessions for us according to your mind. Uh, he speaks in groanings that cannot be expressed. And you read his mind and you give that which we truly deserve amplified and presented with the merits of Jesus. Jesus' merits making them like fragrant incense, pure, beautiful, and delightful as you send to us that which we request. Now your children have to, those many things that they are requesting. We are requesting this morning, Lord. You know all that is in our hearts. We ask that you will look upon these special needs. They are crowded toward the end unwisely we would like to have them dispersed so that they can be focused on we can meditate on them during the course and they'll be all prepared as we go through the session but you know them all it's not our mentioning them our enumerating them that make them uh acceptable to you it is that they are presented and you are the one who inspired those prayers so we, we come to you covered by the merits of Jesus, making these requests to you, Lord. We ask that you take care of the Hamilton family. Uh, you know what is transpiring there. The message, the prayer request is only that you, we pray for this family. So we unite with your efforts in that family and we Accept your intervention to do all that is needed in this family. All that you see is necessary and even that which they are not aware of. 
you know, Lord, and you said you will give us abundantly above all that we ask or even think or even imagine. So we are grateful to unite with your efforts in this family. Uh, we are asking you to pray for the walk with God, seeking a teaching job, and for her children and husband, this individual asks us to. So we told whenever we ask you to bless our spiritual lives, we need not say if it be your will. It is your will. And so we ask that you help with that relationship, with the sanctification that is needed. And we ask that your blessings will be descending in that family, in that life, and that your glorious will will be seen, will be recognized, and will be carried out. We ask to pray for the family members that they may all accept your love and give their lives to you. Pray for healing for siblings and friends Pray for the crusade that is for the one who is presenting and for the hearers. You are aware of where this matter is transpiring, and we unite with your efforts there. We we join in, as Jesus told us. Two of you agree as touching anything. We all here agree. We unite. Ask that your power will be manifested in all these cases. We ask, Father, that you will help with an unspoken and several unspoken requests. You know some who might not have written them down, some who have. Uh, you know what it is. You told us before a word is in our mouth, you recognize it. You know it all together. So you know our thoughts are far off. And as you read our hearts, as you read our minds, as you see our needs, we ask that you will help us truly place them at the feet of Jesus, submit them to you, that you will be able to take them and work with all those circumstances and achieve all that you see need to be done, even that which we do not recognize to be necessary. Uh, Adela Dobson is asking us to pray for her children, her grandchildren, that they will return to you before it is too late. Lord, this is a prayer that you never uh, disregard in the slightest. You told us in your word, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You told us you are not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. You told us though our sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. So whatever these children might be and grandchildren might be involved with, we know there is healing, there is restoration in Jesus. And we unite with your efforts, your angels, Holy Spirit, working in their lives. We join with that which you are doing in their lives to bring restoration, to bring healing, and to help them be candidates for eternity. Kaylee Morgan is asking us to pray for her friend Nicholas Rainford and family. He lost his sister on Monday. A solemn situation, Lord. Death will always be an enemy, always painful and grieving to lose our loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, even our co-workers. So we ask that you would help Nicholas Rainford, the loss of his sister, you help the entire family, help with the preparations for the funeral and all that is involved there. Keep peace and keep grace as you help this, your treasure. That sister is your jewel, Lord, as she is laid to rest, awaiting the resurrection morning. We are hoping that she had allowed you control in her life. We ask that you would lead with all the preparations to be done there. Uh, Andrea. H.S. is asking us to continue to pray for her dad. He's still critically ill in the KPH. PH, that's a hospital with which I'm not acquainted, but you know it all. We ask, Lord, that you will be there and you will bless and you will lead. We're praying for complete healing for 
Marquez, nine year old. This is Claudia's request. Uh, those who strayed from the Lord but don't seem to know it. Yes, that's the that's the Laodicean condition. We are desperately out of touch with you and know not that we are wretched and miserable. We present them to you, Lord. We want to have a heart of compassion also, Claudia is asking us, for every human being. That's the heart of Jesus. Give us that disposition, Lord. Uh, we are praying for salvation. Antoinette is asking healing for my daughters, and granddaughter, a place in the country for us. These are all things that you want to do, Lord. You have shown you, you, have, you wish above all things that we might prosper and be in health. You told us we need to get out of the cities, have a place in the country where we can provide the, the temp, temporal needs. This is being requested by your daughter, Antoinette. And so we know that this is in full keeping with your will. And we ask, we unite with her efforts and with your efforts in that family to bring this about. Uh, then AK is asking us to pray for her family to be closer drawn to you. For her daughter, who doesn't understand that a young child can be baptized, they're not too young to die or to do evil. So true. So as soon as they reach the age of understanding, they should be consecrated to you. We're asking, Lord, that you will bless that family, AK's family, uh, help that the daughter will see that when the child is ready, is able to understand the import of baptism and to allow her to seal her union with you so that the blood of Jesus will cover that child. We present this matter to you. Uh, L. Hunter Cameron Latoya is asking us to pray for her family to give their lives to you, also her siblings and their family, grand aunt and who has a stroke. Lord, you are there, you're in every such situation, and you are working to bring about that which is best. We ask that you would lead in healing. You must work in our hearts so that we will allow you to bring about the, the conditions of health. Health can only be preserved by observing the ten, the, the eight laws of health. So we ask that you would reveal where violations are occurring and help these persons to allow you to transform the practice so that as you give healing, you will be able to maintain it. Baker is asking a prayer request for her in-law to return to you. Jay is asking us, is praying for healing for her body. Uh, we ask uh, we ask that you would help her. Her leg was injured, Lord. It seems to be quite a painful situation, using crutches right now. We unite with your work to restore and ask that you would help her to find the full restoration she needs. It is, it is the sowing time. She's an agriculturalist, agriculture. She's an agriculture. And she needs to be able to move around and use her limbs. So we pray that you would give her the restoration she needs in the springtime there in Canada so she will be able to do the things you see to be necessary and to pre prepare for her livelihood. Uh, we're praying for more loving hearts like Jesus, Claudia says, absolutely. Audrey Ricketts is asking us to pray for her backsliding children and spiritual strength on her part. Faithful is asking us to pray for KB, uh, on, an unspoken matter. Pray for a little girl uh, raped in Trinidad. Oh, Lord, this is such a sad, sad situation where this young lady is, is being, I think from 12, she has been raped by her stepfather. The mother knows it. She's an alcoholic. And you know how this shatters the, the whole life of a child. Only you can heal after this is done. And a, an adult who should be a care provider and protector is raping the child. The mother knows it and criticizes the child. And the male is coming and refers to him as her man. Of course, she is intimidated that the man might like the younger child. 
but it is such a devastating, evil, and disastrous thing to occur. You know all the details, Father. And everything else that is here listed, you see it. We am just enumerating the ones that I can, mentioning them. You have them all. They are registered in your book. You are the one who inspired those requests. And so we are grateful, Lord, that you are taking them all. And through the blood of Jesus, however dark the sins, the conditions, the disease, they are easily washed in the blood of Jesus. If the entire universe was sinful, you could have washed them. Far less our little speck of a planet, no problem for you. So we present them to you. We receive the merits of Jesus. We ask that you would sanctify. Continue to bless this ministry. Sanctify and purify. Let your will be done throughout earth, we ask. And we return to you our love, our gratitude, our worship. Through Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Amen. We want to thank also, yes, amen. We want to thank Brother Riley for singing that song for us, Brother Linford for the scripture reading, Brother Alexander for the prayer, and Brother Linford for his every way he conducts um, this session this morning for us. We look forward again, bro, tomorrow morning. Of course, we will do it all over again. So let me just welcome us, one and all, and is there anyone here for the very first time? You are asked to open your mic or raise your hand. And icon is there. Is there anyone? Have you seen anyone here? Is there any invite? Have you seen your invite? You can make it known. We thank you all for being here with us. Our faithful continue to be encouraged. May the spirit of the Lord continue to rest upon us all and may his peace be with us. Thank you once more. Thank you one and all. And we look forward for tomorrow when we shall do it all over again on prior mountain. The Lord bless you and keep you. Brother Linford. God be with you till we meet again.
Two.